What's up? My name is Techno, but here for Troubleshoot, and welcome back to another optimization guide. So, recently, Apex Legends Season 13 has released with a brand new hero, Newcastle. This video is going to show you how to get the best FPS possible out of Season 13 while keeping the game looking really good, really sharp, and with high visibility. So without further ado, we're going to lightly touch on Windows settings. If you'd like to get even more out of your computer, you can check the description down below for Windows 10 and 11 optimization guides, as well as NVIDIA ones too, even though we will be lightly touching on some of those here. Of course, first of all, you do want to make sure that Windows is completely up to date. Hit start, type an update, and follow through with the steps and the Windows update screen. Then your graphics card driver as well, that's also pretty self-explanatory, and in the description down below you'll find download links for AMD and NVIDIA, and of course if you have something like NVIDIA Shadowplay, you can update your graphics driver through that. Next up, let's start with Apex itself. I personally have this game on Steam, so steps will be a little bit different for you if you have it on other platforms. At least for this first bit. Simply search for and locate Apex, right-click it, and choose Properties. Then inside of here, on the General tab, you'll see Launch Options. In the description down below, you'll find this string of text. Simply copy it and paste it in here for better performance pretty much immediately. Then head across to the Local Files tab and click Browse in the top right. Do note that I have this on eDrive, a bigger, slower hard drive, but if you have this on the fastest drive in your computer, whether it's C drive, an SSD with Windows on it, or anything like that, you should try and move it onto the fastest drive available for the best loading times and stability while you're in-game. For me, eDrive is just fine, so this is where I have it. Click Browse to navigate across to the game's files, now that we're inside of this folder here, I'll simply scroll down, right-click r5apex.exe and click Properties. Then inside of here, I'll head across to Compatibility, make sure that Disable Full Screen Optimizations is unchecked, and under Change High DPI Settings, make sure that this bottom button is ticked and Application is selected. Then hit OK and OK. At the very top, right-click where the text bar is here and choose Copy Address as Text. We'll be using this in just a second. Hit Start, type in GPU, and open Graphics Settings. On Windows 10, this may look a little bit different for you. You'll see something about Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling. Make sure to turn that on and any other options that you see at the very top. But on Windows 11, you'll see this here. On both systems, you'll need to look for this section over here with a drop-down, which will select Desktop App, and then click Browse. Then simply click the very top, paste in the address that we copied, and hit Enter. Then locate R5 Apex, click Add, and when it appears on the list as Apex Legends, select it, click Options, choose High Performance, and click Save over here. Now our game should get a better performance pretty much immediately. Then I'll head back and back and into the Gaming tab over here, then Xbox Game Bar. Make sure that this is turned off unless you specifically use some of the Xbox Game Bar features. Then on the Game Mode tab, make sure that this is turned on, and if you've previously set up the Xbox Game Bar and the capturing system, then you could be recording your screen without even recognizing it, and you may be taking away some of your performance. To make sure that this is disabled, simply hit Start, type in Game Bar, and open the Xbox Game Bar. If you don't have it, don't worry, you don't have it installed. Then at the very top, click Settings, and from this window over here, choose the Capturing tab, and make sure that Record in the background while I'm playing a game is unchecked. Then we can click anywhere to close this, and Xbox Game Bar Capture has successfully been turned off. Now that we're done with that, let's make sure that our NVIDIA graphics card is friendly with the game. Of course, these steps don't apply to AMD users, however, you may have something similar in your software. I'll right-click my desktop and choose the NVIDIA Control Panel, for which you may have to search your Start menu for instead. And inside of here, I'll head across to the Adjust Image Settings with Preview tab, the very first one, and I'll make sure that Use the Advanced 3D Image Settings is ticked, then I'll click Take Me There. This takes me to the Manage 3D Settings tab. Select Program Settings at the very top, then from the drop-down when it eventually loads, click on it and select Apex Legends. Of course, if it doesn't show up anywhere on this list, click Add, and if you've recently played it, you'll see it in this list over here. Otherwise, click Browse, and once again, we'll be pasting the address at the very top, if you still have it copied, and we'll be double-clicking on r5apex.exe. It'll then be added to the list, and I'll quickly optimize this so you can copy my settings. There we go. Of course, some of these may be different for you. I have a 3080 Ti. Here's the first page. Scrolling down, here's the second page. For anything that you don't have, simply don't worry about it, and for anything extra that you do have, well, simply use common sense to figure out what you're supposed to do there. These are all three pages that I've simply scrolled through, and you can copy them as is from my screen. 
Click apply in the bottom right when you're done, and then you can close out of the NVIDIA control panel. Now for some quick PC cleaning before we actually get into the game and some general housekeeping tips. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and clean up some unnecessary temporary files on our computer, saving us some space. Hit start and type in disk, we will be opening up disk cleanup as administrator. When it opens up, simply select C drive, the one with Windows, and then click OK. Wait for the scan to finish, and upon completion, we'll have a whole list of temporary files here that we can clean out of our computer. I'll usually take absolutely everything, except for a cycle bin, which I'll manually go through later, and thumbnails, as I have tons of images and no patience for the thumbnail to generate again. So with everything ticked except for these two, I'll click OK and delete files, then it'll run through and clean those temporary files off of our computer. When it's done, if you have the game installed on a different drive, do make sure to open it up as admin once again, and this time select that drive. Wait for it to run through to completion, and then we can continue. Now we'll go ahead and choose a power plan to make sure that our computer isn't throttling itself. I'll hit start and type in power plan, where I'll open choose a power plan. Inside of here, I'll choose AMD Ryzen High Performance. Of course, if you have a Ryzen processor with the chipset drivers installed, otherwise choose High Performance. If you don't see High Performance, you should at least see Balanced. Just make sure it's not set to Power Saver, otherwise you're going to be throttling your system. If you'd like, you can get the Ultimate Performance Power Plan included with all computers by simply running a command through an administrative command prompt. You'll find this in the description down below. Press Start, type in CMD, and run Command Prompt as Admin. Simply copy and paste in the command by using Control c and Control v hit Enter, wait for it to run, close, refresh the Power Options window, and we'll see a brand new Ultimate Performance Power Option, which we can then select. You'll get different performance depending on what you choose here, so if you have multiple High Performance or Ultimate Performance options, do make sure to play through them and see what you like best. Now, of course, your computer has limited resources. It's best to make sure that you're not unnecessarily using things in the background that you could be using on the game itself. Press Control, Shift and Escape all at once to bring up the Windows Task Manager. Inside of here, on the Processes tab, we can sort by CPU, Memory and GPU to find out what program is using what on our computer. We can then go through and close everything we don't necessarily need running while we're playing the game to get more resources available for the actual game to take, giving us better performance, stability and effort. FPS. When you're done, you can head across to the Startup tab at the very top, sort by status, and everything listed as Enabled will start up when your computer signs in. This of course will slow down the time that your computer takes to boot, and of course means more processes running in the background for you to close later. Simply right-click and disable anything you don't need here to get better general performance out of your computer. If you're a power user, you can head across to the Services tab at the very top, click Open Services at the bottom, and inside of this window, sort by Startup Type. Everything listed as automatic starts up with your computer. The exact same thing goes here. Double click on any process you don't want starting with your computer, then choose startup type manual to manually start it up later or disabled to not have it run at all on your computer to more finely tune what runs on your computer when you start up. The less running, the better performance you can get in games because there's more resources available. Speaking of resources available, it's also a good idea to make sure that you have a minimal number of overlays running on top of your game, including Steam, Discord, etc, etc. Everything that draws on top of the game will take away some of the resources on your computer, giving you a less stable situation to deal with. On top of this, if you're running a heavily GPU-bound game and your GPU's maxing out while your CPU's sitting happily, you can go ahead and disable hardware acceleration in programs like Discord, Chrome, Steam, etc, so that they use more of your CPU instead of your GPU while running in the background of you playing your games. This way you'll have more GPU available for the game itself and your CPU will have more to do in the background because it wasn't doing much to begin with. On top of this, if you're running a laptop, it's a good idea to try using an external display as sometimes you'll get better performance on your computer. This of course depends on your laptop and how your dedicated graphics card is wired into it. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and fire up the game so we can get to in-game optimizations. Do keep in mind you can get even better performance following the Windows 10, 11 and Nvidia optimizations down below. On top of this, if I do any other guide videos, you'll also find them there under the related section in the description. Now that we're done with all of these, let's actually open up the game itself and get to optimizing the in-game settings. 
There we go. Once we're in game, don't click anything on the main menu over here. Instead, look at the very bottom for the key that you have to press to get to the server picker. Of course, you want to click the closest server to you that also has a population on it so that you can find games quickly and with good ping. For me in South Africa, the closest best server is London. The second best is Bahrain, though it's usually pretty empty. Anyways, when you have the correct server selected, click to continue and we'll load into the main menu. From here, in the bottom right, click the Settings menu, then Settings once more, and under the Gameplay tab, we'll scroll down until we see Usage Sharing, simply make sure that this is set to Disabled, and Performance Display, make sure that this is turned on to see what kind of FPS we're getting, to see if we're making a difference, which we definitely will be. Of course, you can come back here and turn this off when you don't want to see that information anymore. Then on the mouse and keyboard tab, at the very top, simply make sure mouse acceleration is turned off for more accurate aiming. Then on the video tab at the very top, display mode absolutely should be set to full screen for the best possible performance, though some people report a better performance on borderless windowed. You'll need to do some experimenting of your own with this. Aspect ratio should match your screen, and the same goes for the resolution here. This is the absolute last thing you should try and drop if you want to gain FPS. Having this set to the default resolution for your screen will make sure that everything looks as crispy as possible. Brightness and field of view are both user preference, as well as these last two settings here. Though for me at least, I prefer to have a sprint view shake set to minimal so that I can see people easier when I'm running around. Scrolling down to the advanced settings, VSync should absolutely be turned off and Nvidia Reflex should be set to enabled on RTX graphics cards and enabled plus boost on older graphics cards, GTX and so on. The adaptive resolution target should be set to zero so it doesn't change our resolution while we're playing the game as this can cause sudden graphics quality losses and also a drop in performance sometimes. It's not the most stable. Adaptive Super Sampling disabled if you have this enabled, otherwise it's disabled by default. And the aliasing should also be turned off and the texture streaming budget should match your graphics card. If you have a high-end graphics card, you'll be setting this to 6 or 8 gigabytes of VRAM, but of course this really depends on your hardware. If you're not sure, either Google your graphics card followed by VRAM to see how much you have, otherwise you can leave it at low or medium just to see what kind of performance you get. With a graphics card with tons of VRAM, you can crank this comfortably high and not worry about anything really. This actually improves your performance if it's set to the right amount. Texture filtering has absolutely no impact on performance, and of course the higher this option is, the better the game looks. Personally, I have this set all the way to 16x, which is as high as this goes. Ambient occlusion quality, disable this. Sun shadow coverage and sun shadow detail, both should be set to low, and spot shadow detail should be disabled. Volumetric lighting, disabled. Dynamic spot shadows, disabled. Model detail on medium, just for better quality. You can crank this down if you really need performance. Effect detail on low, impact marks on low. Once again, I'd prefer to have this on rather than off so I can see where bullets and things like that are coming from rather than not knowing at all. And finally, ragdolls have this set to low as it doesn't really add anything to the game. Beyond that, everything else is your preference. Simply click apply in the bottom right, head back and enjoy the game. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno over here for Troubleshoot. This has been the Apex Legends Season 13 2022 update, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!